If you have a golf ball size consciousness, when you read a book, you'll have a golf ball size understanding. When you look out, a golf ball size awareness. And when you wake up in the morning, a golf ball size wakefulness. But if you could expand that consciousness, then you read the book, more understanding. You look out, more awareness. And when you wake up, more wakefulness. It's consciousness. And there's an ocean of pure, vibrant consciousness inside each one of us. And it's right at the source and base of mind, right at the source of thought, and it's also at the source of all matter. The way we develop the art of thinking, which is essentially calculus, is this. The universe as it comes in nature, the physical universe, is something like a Rorschach block. It's all wiggles. We who live in cities are not really used to this because we build everything in straight lines and rectangles and so on. Wherever you see this sort of thing, you know human beings have been around because they're always trying to straighten things out. But nature itself is clouds, is water, is the outlines of continents, is mountains, is uh, uh, biological existences, and all of them wiggle. And wiggly things are to human consciousness a little bit of a nuisance. Because we want to figure it out. And it is as if, therefore, some ancient fisherman one day held up his net and looked at the world through the net. He said, my, just think of that. There I can see the view. It's one, and that peak of that mountain is one, two, three, four, five, six holes across. And the base is one, two, three, four, five holes down. Now I've got its number. See? And so the lines of latitude and longitude, the lines of celestial and terrestrial latitude and longitude, the whole idea of a matrix, of a uh, looking at things through graph, paper painted on, uh, printed on cellophane, is the basic idea of measurement. This is the way we calculate. We break down the wiggliness of the world into comprehensible, countable, geometrical units, and thereby figure it and construct it in those terms. And this is so successful up to a point that we can, of course, come to imagine that this is the way the physical world really is. Discrete, discontinuous, uh, full of points, in, in fact a mechanism.